So y'all asked and asked and asked and asked and asked again <laughs> for me to do the story time on the time that I got spiked um, at the club. So basically, um, if you haven't watched my previous video, I did a never have I ever with my brother. And in there, one of the questions was, have you ever been spiked at the club or drugged at the club? And my answer was, yes, I have. So everybody reacted to that. It was like, do a story time, do a story time. So here I am, giving you all the story time. Now, I want to make a bit of a disclaimer. Although I'm taking this very lightly in the moment, it's been many, many years since this happened. And it still makes me sick to my stomach to talk about it. But if I don't laugh, I'll cry. So that's what's going on. Um, I do think it's important that I make this video to also like bring awareness to this because I think it's happening more now than it even did back then. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna get into it and I'm gonna tell you guys what happened and how to avoid getting into these situations. So, first thing you need to know is that um, my parents were very, very um, strict about like teaching us to be aware of things like being spiked at the club or like any sort of situation that could put us in danger. So we were always like very aware of these situations. Um, we never took drinks that people just gave us. We never. Um, like drinks like a drink if it was just sitting around we never left our drinks when we went to the bathrooms we never left we never um went to dance and left our drinks and then got it afterwards like we kept our drinks with us we bought things that you could put your thumb in like a bottle that you could put your thumb in keep it close keep it with you all the time like we were aware of the or i was aware of these situations let me say uh, i'm saying we because my brother had to become aware of this when he got older and started partying and stuff but like for me my parents were very very like they made a lot of efforts to make sure that we were prepared for these situations um so yeah i just wanted to say that i was this was a once in a lifetime situation for me and um i still regret my actions to this day because i feel so stupid for doing what i did when i know or i knew better but in any case so uh, first of all, this happened to me by someone that I considered a friend, which it, to me is the worst part. Even though we didn't know each other that long, um, I did consider this person to be someone that I thought I knew. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys first how I met this guy. So um, after my parents got divorced in 2012, um, I at some point moved back home at, in 2013. Um, I had finished school already and everything and I moved back in with my mom and she was newly single, the divorce was finalized and she was just going through a rough time, okay? So I was like, hey, let's go out, let's go get some drinks, let's like get you back in the world. Like keep in mind, I was not a child anymore. So, you know, so I was like, let's go, let's just go and have some fun. Um, so that's what we did. But somehow we ended up in Hatfield. Now Hatfield was, um, it was like this huge square center filled with different types of clubs and pubs. So you could literally walk from one corner to the other corner. You can pub hop and everything and you were all within the square. Now, <clears throat> the only problem is that uh, the square was a very big focal point for students to go and party. So it was a very young crowd. Um, but in any case, um, the square is now closed down and turned into, um, I think, flats or something now because there was too much nonsense going on there relating to my situation. Anyway, we go out, we end up at Drop Zone, which was like one of the main dance clubs there and we're having a good time. Um, we like chilling, we're meeting people and at one point, um, I was smoking at the time so we spent a lot of time in the smoking area. Um, at one point we walked past this table with these two guys and they were clearly foreigners. Um, they had like a French accent and so they told us like, hey, don't you want to join our table? We've got a bunch of friends here and we were like, cool, why not? And we partied with them pretty much the entire night. We even, the, um, one of the guys that had shares in the club was there with us at some point, you know what I mean? We like made like super cool connections that night. 
we had a great time nothing happened everything was great i took one of the guys numbers now these guys were pilots they worked together at one of the air bases and um they had french accents but i don't feel like they were from france i feel like they were from somewhere else but i don't i, I don't know i don't remember i blocked out a lot of information <laughs> anyway so um this is when we meet this, these guys so the one guy and i like end up chatting a lot strictly friend basis there was clearly like nothing going to happen between us uh i just wasn't interested in him in, in that kind of way but we were great friends we chatted for like two weeks we had met up at the club a few times after that party together like you know everything was cool we like had become friends um then one night i uh got in contact with one of my cousins and he was like no they're going to the club do i want to come with so i'm like hell yeah i want to come with like let's go so it was my cousin and his two friends i believe and his girlfriend at the time that was um that was worth and we again end up at hartfield we were like first like at the reses and like nothing was happening and then we ended up by by hartfield square so we get there and we go um again to drop them because i love to dance so we went to the dance club so in any case we get there um and this this is nothing to do with the club guys the club was bomb like i freaking loved it there i practically loved there like the bouncers even knew me so but in any case i literally just love to dance and i would always go out to dance i was also in a very dark place in my life that time there's just a lot going on with me so i was out a lot um anyway we go to the club we're having a great time we literally had just gotten there because we got there quite late and um i had had one drink only one like you know the starter we also didn't have a lot of money so it's not like we were going crazy all the time so i literally had like one drink and everything was cool we're having a good time and on the one side they had like pool tables and stuff so the guys were that side and we were on the dance side and once again we go to the smoking section and um and boom i ran into this guy and i'm like oh my god hello how are you and i'm giving him a hug and everything's fine and he's like no let me go get you a drink i'm like yeah cool now this is where i made the mistake i have never ever ever let anyone buy me a drink without me being right there at the bar and i was literally like three feet away so i have no idea when this guy did what he did but i i felt like i was watching him the whole time but i mean it literally takes a split second you know and usually i always drink always drank ciders so bottles so stuff that i could keep close but he literally came back with a glass of something and i didn't even think about it and i don't know why i like let my guard down in that moment but in any case i felt like i was watching him the whole time and he came and he gave me the glass and i literally took like one sip and i swear to you it was like not even two minutes and i just i was completely disorientated like as if i went from zero to 100 like i was so drunk all of a sudden from like one sip of this drink and that's like i didn't even know in the moment that something had happened but luckily i was with uh, my cousin's girlfriend at the time and i just all i remember is like i started getting really dizzy really disorientated um I, I, afterwards she told me that that guy actually kissed me and i don't even remember that um she said like immediately like after i had a drink he like reached in and he like kissed me and like at some point i pushed him away and i was like i'm not feeling well and i ran to the bathroom and she came in afterwards and she was like holding my hair up and like one thing i'm like so grateful for is that my body if it doesn't like something it's gonna instantly reject it so i ran to the bathroom and i just started throwing up like just started vomiting like one way and i was in the bathroom with her for about an hour like she was giving me water i was like throwing up throwing up eventually um she went and got my cousin and his friend and they walked me out but all i remember is like feeling really drunk like i was disorientated everything was blurry like i felt like i couldn't walk properly like i was as if i was like i was slurring my words like as if i was like extremely drunk all of a sudden and this was just from one sip of whatever it was that he gave me and um and when i we came out the bathroom this guy was 
gone like nowhere to be seen so my cousin comes and he's like what's going on and i'm like i think that guy spiked me i said i literally had one drink and one sip of the drink he gave me and i was like out of it i said it's impossible for me to have gotten that drunk over nothing and my cousin like starts fuming now my my male cousins are very protective over me and all the female cousins like we're very close-knit family so they're gonna like that's if that switch is flipped like it's game over so um and i'm so grateful for the people i was with that day because i think if i was with anybody else i don't think the situation would have been handled the way it was handled and i think i would have been in a lot worse like so I would have been a lot worse circumstances than than what actually went down and that's why I'm able to talk about it but basically I remember them getting me to the stairs and um, because the club was like you had to walk up the stairs to get to the club so they got me to the stairs they got me down and my cousin told his girlfriend at the time like just watch her I'm coming now and he was gone what I think was like 30 minutes I just remember sitting there like going like this like not feeling good and i was constantly nauseous and everything and he had then gone and it what literally felt like he shut the entire hatfield down because he had so many friends and connections he managed to get everyone out like looking for this guy um because this guy was clearly a regular there so they knew what he looked like all the security guards all the bouncers everyone was like looking out for this guy nobody could find him that guy literally turned into furniture like he just disappeared and that's what makes me feel also that he knew exactly what he was doing because luckily i had that guy on whatsapp so i was able to pull a picture up of him and like they were showing everyone nobody could find this guy and for months afterwards no one nobody saw or heard from him so that's when that's what like secures to me the fact that he definitely did something wrong and he knows what he did um i don't know what his intentions were but the fact that he was like trying to make a move so quickly shows me that it was it it was gonna be really bad it was gonna be really really bad for me if the people that were there weren't there and um and yeah basically that's what happened i then after that basically blacked out in a sense like i wasn't i didn't pass out or anything but i have no recollection of what happened after that all i remember is like as we were leaving like i, I felt like i needed to throw up and i like ran to the bathroom after that like it's completely blank to me um from the information that i can get from my cousin and from my mom and all of that uh, because i don't know how i got home at all because i took taxis to get to my cousin and we walked from his res to hatfield so i had no idea but from what i can understand is that my cousin's friend was there with a car and he took us home and my mom says that my cousin stayed over that night by us and he apparently i even phoned her to say like can he sleep over and she was like yeah it's fine and um he literally stayed there by me like the entire night and made sure i was okay um but i don't remember any of this i don't remember any of it like like it's like feels familiar like when they say it but if i have to like think back like i can't picture it like literally the last thing i remember was um like needing to throw up that last time and then nothing literally nothing and i think the worst part of it all was that it literally was just one sip you know it took one sip for me to be that disorientated that like out of it and yeah it's it's not an easy situation and i'm very very like like i'm not proud of my actions i know i was in a very like dark place at that time in my life but i was i felt like i was always responsible like i've always been a responsible person and even when having fun and going out and doing things like that i never put myself in those situations and so i felt like in a way i still do beat myself up for allowing that to happen because i feel like it was my fault like i made that stupid mistake you know what i mean because i've never i mean and i used to party a lot like that was like my thing I, i've never been in such a situation before it was the first and the last time um yeah anyway so that basically happened i blocked the guy and everything couldn't find him 
I never went to go make a case about it or anything like that because I didn't have any proof. Uh, and like, what, what was I gonna say? They were gonna think I just freaking took drugs or I was just drunk or whatever. So yeah, never made a case of it. Never found the guy again. Never met him, never spoke to him again after that. Never saw him again, nothing. So I don't know, he basically fell off the face of the earth for all I care. Um, I blocked it out and yeah, that's, that's basically my story and what happened. So I think the main thing to learn from this is like always be aware, even if it's people you know, um, because you can't trust anybody. Like, I'm sorry, but you can't. Um, people will turn on you in an instant. Um, so yeah, even if it's people you know, don't take drinks from anybody, get your own drinks. If someone wants to buy your drink, go with them, buy something that's closed, open it yourself, keep it with you. Do not leave your drinks unattended at any point. And if you do, don't drink it, just throw it out. Like, you know, I know they're making a lot of things now, like there's nail polish that you can dip in your drink that'll change color if it's drugged. Um, and there's, these new scrunchies that fall that turn into like a thing you can put over your cup with your straw in like if you feel like at any point you're at risk of any of these things happening to you because you are in situations where this is a possibility try and invest in those things or you know anything like that but the main thing is just to be aware all the time and don't take anything from anyone like just don't <laughs> it's not safe um so yeah i'm very grateful for my cousin and his friends that took care of me that day and yeah i love you guys so much deborah if you're watching this <laughs> um i think they if it wasn't for them i don't know what would have happened to me so so yeah it's a difficult situation but it is what it is and i hope you guys can learn from it the same way i actually learned from it um without it actually happening to you um you know just be safe out there that's that's the main thing so yeah if you guys have any questions about the situation um let me know down in the comments i know the main question was like how did i know i was drunk um i think i basically answered that but the the fact that i like had barely drank anything before that and i literally felt completely wasted after one sip of that guy's drink and i knew like if you look at the situation there were a lot of red flags and that's how i knew that i was drugged um but yeah if there's any other questions just let them put them down in the comments i'll answer anything um and yeah that's my story <laughs> anyway i'll see you guys in my next video i love you guys so much bye Thank you.